Hello, everybody, and welcome to another year of Scratch Challenges. Uh, hi there, I'm Mr. Uh, Smith. I'm one of the technology consultants who is um, going to be doing this this year with you folks. So to start, um, I'm going to be using um, Scratchy to draw our names in our first Scratch Challenge. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our, um, our pen tool right here. And the pen tool is going to allow us to be able to um, be able to do different things and be able to write. And what we're going to do to get this all started is I'm going to start with a when green flag clicked. So to do this, what we're going to do is we do green flag clicked with the pen and we'll put the pen down. Imagine this is now the pen touching paper. We'll use a motion block and we'll move 10 steps over to the side. I won't do that. And you can kind of get the idea that there's a blue line that Scratch the Cat is drawing. So there's a basic idea. So to draw our name, we're probably going to want to position Scratchy the Cat somewhere smart, like down here in the bottom right corner. When we start clicking now, you can see there's our line that's being drawn, but our last line was is kind of staying there. So the first thing we want to do when we do this is we're going to want to clear all the other drawings we've done before. So now when we run this, and the one problem is we're drawing a very short line, so you can see our little teeny line right there. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Now we go like that, you can see our line. So that's perfect. So I just made our made us move 100 steps instead of 10, and now you can see it. You can see every time I'm having to move this back to the start, I'm having to move Scratchy the Cat back to the start, which isn't that great. And the start location of Scratchy the Cat um, is right here, um, and you can see over here in the top corner, there's where the location of Scratch the Cat is. So Scratchy's right over here, this is his location, there's this spot where he is, and over here on the side, this is the location of him. So um, one thing that we can do is we can place him right there always at the start. So once you get him in the location or get Scratchy the location you want uh, Scratchy to be, if you pull in a go to block, you'll notice it's going to automatically fill in these two areas with Scratchy's current location. I'm actually going to put that right up at the top. So I'm going to go to the starting spot. I'm going to clear any other ink that's on the stage, and then I'm going to put my pen down. And now, when I do this over and over again, it kind of doesn't look that exciting, but it always puts Scratchy's back to the start. The pen goes down, or sorry, the, um, goes here, clears all the other ink, the pen goes down, and he moves. So my name is Ryan, and to write the name Ryan, that means I'm going to have to not move in this direction, but I'm actually, actually going to have to move up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just do this. Reset. So I'm here at the start, and I'm going to want to rotate Scratchy so he's facing up. So imagine he's going to rotate onto his back, so I'm actually going to have to rotate him or turn him. And that's going to be a counterclockwise turn um, of about 90 degrees to get him to be facing on his back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Perfect, so now Scratchy's on his back. And now I'm gonna get Scratchy to move. And the move always happens in the direction that Scratchy's facing. So, yeah, Scratchy move 100 steps. And that is not what I wanted. And now you can kind of press that again. You see Scratchy always turning around and around in different directions, which can be very frustrating. The other thing that we're I'm kind of making a mistake of is we want Scratchy to be always pointing in the right direction at the very start. And this, block right here is like a reset button for the direction that Scratchy, maybe it's IE, is facing. And I'll leave this block right here just so it can be a reminder of how I'm using it. So what I'm going to do is not only am I going to reset the location, clear all the ink, but I'm going to also reset. And as long as it says point in direction 90 degrees, now what's going to happen is I'm going to always have him facing in the right direction right off the top. So you see now when I press the start button, it always turns him back to the way he should be facing. And then when I turn him, every time I press reset, it turns him initially to face forward and then. If you're a little bit confused by what's going, you can also kind of add a weight between each one of these blocks and it can slow down the steps for you. So we got the point of direction 90 to reset them. So now I got Scratchy facing up. Now I want him facing forwards again. 
So to get him facing forwards, if I turn to him counterclockwise 90 degrees to get him face up, I'm going to turn him clockwise 90 degrees to get him to face back forward. So let's see if that works. Perfect. And one thing is Scratchy is kind of blocking our line. And as we're going here, let's say you bring in your next move. We're going to move forward and up by a full 100. We're going to go half of 100, which is 50. And if you find Scratchy is kind of blocking your work, you want to see. Another trick you can use is you can bring in a show and a high block. And as long as you have the show and the high block um, here, you can hide Scratchy just by clicking on that block and show Scratchy by clicking the show block. And you just kind of keep those floating and not attach to anything. And you can use them as the coder to kind of show and hide Scratchy. All right, so we've got that part of the letter R done. Now I need to turn him, so visualize him turning. He's going to rotate so he's facing down because he's going to go down. So that's going to be a clockwise turn. And the nice thing about these is they're mostly all the same kind of turns. We're going to get them to turn 90, oh, not point in direction. We're going to turn, not 15 degrees, but get them to turn 90 degrees. So we'll see if that worked. Beautiful. So now we're going to move another 50 steps down. Perfect. And now we're going to get him moved back in. So we need to rotate him so he's facing upside down. So we're going to turn him again. And you got to visualize here. Visualize the turn that's going to be needed again to be looking over in that direction over there. So he's going to rotate clockwise the way the hands of the clock turn. And we're going to turn another 90 degrees. Make sure that actually happens. He's upside down facing in that direction. And we'll move another 50 steps. <laughs> We'll just do that. Perfect. So now let's turn him all the way back around so he's facing forward. So we'll use our reset button for point and direction. So this is going to rotate him all the way back around so he's facing in the right direction. Perfect. I'm going to hide Scratchy for a second just so we can visualize. So now we're going to want to draw the leg of the letter R. The leg of the letter R is going to go right there and it's going to be halfway between the two arms right here and here. So I'm going to draw this. And it's not on a 90 degree turn, which are being all our turns right here. We want to do one of that turns that's going to be halfway. So what we're going to do, let's just show Scratchy. So we're going to rotate him, but we're not going to rotate him 90 degrees. We're going to rotate him half of 90 degrees, which is a 45 degree. Let's see what a, a move of 50 does, if that's going to be long enough to kind of get to there. So let's Run that, looks good, but we don't know what's behind Scratchy, so let's hide him for a second. All right, so that's not quite long enough, so let's move a little bit further. We'll go maybe 60, and this might take a little bit of time to try to go. That 60 is good, let's try 65 steps to see if it's any better. Run that again, 65 is good. Let's try 70, see what 70 looks like. And this, you know, is something that you can fine tune as, as you're going like I am. So 70 steps looks really good. All right, so now we're gonna move over here and start our Y. So let's move Scratchy over. So I'll just show where Scratchy is. So Scratchy is right now there. So if I just go with a move, think about which way Scratchy is facing. If I just assume that I want him to move over there, first I have to turn him so he's facing that direction. So let's use another reset of his direction. So it's going to face perfectly forward. Excellent. Now let's move him over. I'm going to hide him again. So let's move from here to about there. So let's just do a move, I don't know. Let's move 50 steps. Let's run that. Ah, uh, and then drew a line. Don't forget the computer's gonna do exactly what you tell them to do. He doesn't know that I want it to stop writing. So what I need to do is before I move 50 steps, I need to pick the pen up. I need to move 50 steps, and then I need to put the pen down again. So let's just run that and see if it works this time. So there's good, and let's show where Scratchy is. And Scratchy's over here now. So I'm going to want to rotate Scratchy so Scratchy's facing up. So visualize what that turn's going to look like. Too. So to get him to rotate onto his back, he's going to rotate backwards. And that's going to be a counterclockwise turn to rotate onto his back of 90 degrees. So that should get him facing up. Fantastic. And then I'll move up by about, we'll make it 50. So there's the leg of the letter Y, and I'm going to want to go up on an angle to do the one part of the Y. So 
show stretch again. So I'm going to rotate him counterclockwise. And if you look, the arrow even shows, it shows that rotation. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to rotate him back. Now it's not going to be a whole angle turn, it'll be a half. So I'm going to go on a 45 degree angle. And let's move, let's just make sure that that works. All perfect, he is facing the direction I want him to go. And we'll move, let's pick him move 50 steps. Perfect, so I got him here, and I want him right back to the start. So you can do a little trick where you make him move 50 steps forward. Make a sketchy move. Oops. Yes, there we go. So we got sketchy to move 50 steps forward. Now it's sketchy to get him to move right back 50 steps. So I'll just hide. Perfect, so there's the Y. I'll show stretches back here. I want to re-rotate him so he's back the way he should be rotated. Sometimes it's easier to figure that out. So we'll point him in direction 90 so he's facing forward. Perfect. And I'm going to want to do another 45 turns. So I'm going to rotate him backwards 45 degrees. That direction there. Counterclockwise rotation. 45 degrees. He's facing up. And then I'm going to go with a move, and we made the other arm a 50 step long arm. And there's my name started. So, next thing I'd probably do is, you know, rotate him for he's facing forward, and then I'd move him all the way down here, move over, and start the letter A of doing Ryan. A quick trick is to make sure you visualize what you're trying to do first. So, even just think out ahead of time. First, I'm going to go start here, then I'm going to move here then I'll move here, then I'll move here. So visualize it as steps. I started here, I went up, I went over, I went back, I went over. Um, once you've done your awesome work, um, make sure that you share your work and your teacher can help you with sharing your work. And then in the, the YouTube uh, description of this video, we've included the link to our studio that you can post your studio, or you can post your project to, to share how you have coded your name. In the pen tool, you can also change the colors of your letters. So if you wanted to, you could also change the color of your letters if you wanted to. So you can see here, when I put the pen down again, I can now change the colors of my letters. So if you want to get a little creative in there, and these colors can be changed by hovering over any other color, and you can change that to all sorts of crazy colors. That's kind of a fun way to kind of change up um, and be creative as you're kind of doing this. So I hope uh, this goes well for Scratch Challenge number one, and your teachers can also show you how to tag your project with TLDSB code in the title of your project. Good luck, and I hope it goes well.